Hello everybody. Sorry, I think there was some technical issues with Instagram. Instagram is acting funny today. I don't know if it's the same for you. Hi. Hello. Just going to directly add my guest for today. Hi. I wanted to welcome Hello. you to the song. Adri. Hi. <laughs> I'll have to reintroduce you now. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. Same here. <laughs> so, hi everybody. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Intercultural Conversations. And today we are joined by Advika Shetty. And like I was mentioning before, she has a list of accolades. And if I were to say it really fast, it would be like a Shankar Mahadev and Breathless song. You know, it would go on and on and on. But today, the reason why that she's here is because she's many things, but most importantly, she's for me and for this show. She's also a um, folk dance artist, right? And I think folk dance in India is such a reflection of regional culture. And I'm just so happy that when I was in school, I used to do folk dance, but the um, focus for it was very different. It was more to be on stage than to understand the dance itself. But I'm so glad that the next generation, like Advika, are taking the art forms forward and are actually doing it with all their heart. So, Advika, I'm still going to give a little bit of an introduction to you because there are going to be many audiences from outside India who may not know uh, exactly. So, Advika has been part of, she's been a contestant on a show called D.I.D. Little Masters, which is aired all over India. She's a yeah. star there. <laughs> Then she is also um, awarded or given the title of Tuluvasiri, which is basically a title given by the Tulu speaking community for people who take, or individuals, or exceptional individuals who take forward the name for the community and the culture of the community. And she has also been awarded by the governor of Karnataka, if that's not enough. And how old are you again, Advika? 17. <laughs> and she's 17. So in her 17 years of life, she's achieved quite a lot. And she's a Yakshagana artist. So thank you so much, Advika. Thank you for taking the time. I know you have your exams. I just realized you had your exams. Somebody told me that there are exams going on. Are they yeah. still going on? Am I taking uh, in your study time? I am. No, 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 no. You're not. I'm, I just finished my class. Ex I mean, like, the class exams, like class tests, and then I'll be starting my mm -hmm. class uh, on 31st of this month. So, yeah. Okay. So, you do have the yeah. time, no? I'm not disturbing you. Other no, than no, mommy no. will be like, why is she doing this? She has to study. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, guys, Advika is also my niece, yeah? You are my niece, no? My yeah. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> proud of that. I, I come, all my nieces are very talented, I feel. And my other niece is going to be on the show soon as well. So hi, Advika. Hello. Hi. And before we go forward with your personal journey and, you know, your personal story as well, for our audience, especially who are from Europe and the States and even different regions within India as well, can you please tell us what is Yakshagana as an art form and um, what got you interested in it? Okay. So basically, Yakshagana is like a dance drama, and you have lots of elements going into this dance form. So these dance forms were basically taught to the schoolboys back in the 20th century, so that the boys would remember the uh, uh, the mythological stories, what which has been you know done like the Mahabharata or the stories of Krishna or uh, mm. from the Bhagavad. Uh, and all of this and other uh, you know amazing stories of the goddess and goddess god and goddesses that has been done and this is how it, it's been carried on to the current generation so usually men used to put the uh, uh, the costumes and the vesha mm -hmm. of the women but then now there are women also getting into this field before it was just okay. boys who were doing it 
and uh, mm-hmm. there there's a thing called rangastara and then mm-hmm. chauki so okay. rangastara is where you perform and chauki is basically backstage what you call in english so in rangastara it's where you perform and you don't really have a lot of space to perform in it's like mm-hmm. in a square shape and that's mm-hmm. it for you to perform and that's how it has come in a cultural way and uh, the backstage what you call is uh, chauki in chauki you keep Uh, a photo of the god okay because it is uh, since yakshagana is a way of uh, devoting yourself to the god it is also the god is also used to worship so that you know the performance goes well and everything mm-hmm. you know goes so we or our makeup and costume everything goes there and once okay. you're done you call that that okay so that's also when you are at the chauki or backstage that's also like a performance that happens backstage amongst mm-hmm. the artists it's basically like a dressing room to oh, call okay. it an English, a dressing room so okay. you be prepare everything backstage there yeah nice and and i i read that you got interested in it at a very very young age you were i think 4 when you got interested in the dance form so what is the story with that why you know what attracted you to it Did we lose um, Advika? Are you back again? I lost you there for a second. Can you hear me, folks who are online? Can we hear Advika? By the way, I've been told I come too close to the camera. But I don't get. Look at my face. Look at it, Adi. I'm gonna add you again. Yes, I'm gonna add. Oh, she's already there. Oops, we lost. We lost Advika. I'm sure she'll be able to join again. You can send in a request, Advika, if you can watch this. In the meantime, people are already online here. I can see a couple of people online. If you all have any questions, please, please go ahead and you know probably ask it in the comments because I think Yakshagana as an art form, people from Karnataka are very aware of it, and um, from uh, and it's just it just surprises me that. Such a beautiful art form is not as well known in other parts of the country. Hi, Adri, you're back again. Yeah, I'm so sorry. My network is pretty bad in here. Sorry. No problem. No problem at all. So I was I was asking you that you know I read that you got interested in the art form when you were just four years old. So you were watching it on TV and you got you know very interested in it. What about it? Do you have a memory of what about it attracted you? And you're like, I want to do this, Mama, because like you said, there were not, um, there's still not many girls who are doing this, right? And for your, also for your parents to be supportive of it is amazing. So yes, what what actually attracted you to it? The reason that I got into the dance field is because of Yakshagan. Actually, I yes. got interested. Yeah. Uh, my mom and dad used to, you know, usually watch Yakshagana so that I would, you know, come to know about Yakshagana a little bit. So that's how mm. how I came to know, and I wouldn't let them change the channel once the Yakshagana is on. I think the beats or the, you know, the chende, what you call, uh, where the they create the beats and the sound. I think, yeah. and colorful costumes, the way they present themselves, the character, everything together, yeah. it was just really attractive and amazing to watch. So yes. that's how I felt interested, and then I got an amazing opportunity. I have a very amazing guru who taught, who was teaching me actually. So yeah, that's mm-hmm. how I got into it. Nice. I can completely understand, especially as a child, because I would watch Yakshagana as a child. We would come there, we come to Mangalore and watch the performances, and the pride with which they perform is just so. It it, yeah. it it gives me pride that okay I come from here and this is where this art form originated from. And if you want, can you share the name of your guru? Who was it that taught you from that uh, age? Yes, uh, Rakshit Chetty Padre. He's uh, okay. he's actually a Yakshagan artist himself, a professional Yakshagan artist, one of the amazing artists that I've seen yet. So yeah, yeah he's yeah. <laughs> nice. And could you also tell us about you know the process of actually getting ready because. 
you know i was you know we've seen the costumes and actually shared a couple of videos of yours in the ad as well and you know the costumes are so elaborate the makeup is so elaborate and it's beautiful can you tell us share something about that process and how that is for you especially when yes. you starting with four having so much of <laughs> costumes on your body i can't imagine the number of layers in it and then the makeup yes. so how is it for you how was the process is the process for you actually So in Yakshagana, there's two different types. Okay, so there's Tengu and there's Bada Gudetu. So okay. we, I mainly Tengu Gudetu. I do both the styles, but then mainly it's Tengu Gudetu. So if you know Udupi, right? So Udupi and that side they do it as a Bada Gudetu. So the mm-hmm. the little difference is that that in Tengu Gudetu you do Digi now, which is you you jump and then you turn. So that's mm-hmm. called as Digi. So you mainly do that, but then in Bada Gudetu it's mainly turning on your knees. You kneel down and then you turn. So that's the main difference. The costumes are also very different, but very amazing. So mm. talking about my costumes, even in the both the sides, you know, there are. It depends on the character that you're playing. So right. there are, yeah. So there's a uh, Pagadi Vesha, which is my favorite actually. I started. I didn't start with the Pagadi Veshas actually. I just started with the one which you put wig and then you you put like a tiara and all of that. Not basically a tiara, but then you can call it in that way. Like a crown, so, big crown, right? Like, yeah. you no, know, like. Like this way, it mm-hmm. comes this. Way. So it was a Krishna Vesha actually. So your makeup and your costume together, it will take you like an hour or so, like one hour plus. But then oh. if it's a huge Vesha, it will take a longer time. And uh, you're wearing a Kirita Vesha. Raja Vesha is all like all about a uh, big big Vesha, like uh, the Rakshasas or the kings and all of that. You know, there there's like a round Kirita and all yeah. of that. Yeah, that's all Raja Veshas. But then Pagadi comes this way, and hmm. I still really, I really wanted to put Pagadi Veshas. It's one of my favorite. And yeah. the pain that goes into it is the day I understood it. The day when I put it on, because there's a thing called a Chitta Pati, which you have to tie right here. So right. it goes back to the middle of your like the down middle of your uh, what do you call the spine? Head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right here. So it pains very bad because that kirita needs to stay within that. It's like a mm-hmm. round thing, and then the kirita has like a little gap there, so it sits in there, in between mm-hmm. it, so that it won't fall front or back. So all the pressure goes here and down there. So it hurts very bad, and upon that, all the costumes and the ga- headgear or the uh, the ornaments, it's made up of light wood. So these days they even use thermocols, but then it's mainly used, uh, made of light wood. So mm-hmm. the costumes are huge. You need to put a lot of, uh, you know, gunny bags. So yes. You put you red. You put a lot of gunny bags, so your uh, butt looks a bit more bigger. No, is, I don't know. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> your butt will look huge, so that you know that uh, uh, that uh, look comes into you. You know that I uh, can understand. Gut to the right, gut to the face. So yeah, but that comes exactly. in. But yeah. is that really uncomfortable then during the performance, or you're just so lost in the performance you can't really recognize if something irritating you or your? Yeah, you put in a lot of uh, sort of things like pajamas, kind of things mm-hmm. like the patiala pants, not patiala actually, but then you can call it that way. So mm-hmm. it's all secured and it's tight. So mm-hmm. and of course performing, you you just don't really know. Yeah, it is lost, uh, and I you know. I've seen your videos as well when you are performing. You're completely present there with the performance, so I can imagine that you don't really pay that much attention to everything else that's probably irritating you as much. And what about the makeup? Have you learned to do the makeup on your own? Uh, I know very little bit about it because uh, it's just you know it's very difficult, and you need to be present for the classes when you do it because the difference uh-huh. makeup for uh, different characters. It's not the similar one for every single one. Supposedly for uh, Krishna, you have to, you know, put a uh, blue color on your face. Yeah. So you mix different colors. It's not like you know we paint a blue color. So right. that's why you know it's very different and very vibrant. So I have learned a very little bit of it, but that, there's a yeah, lot. Yeah, we have a lot that you've learned. So I think this is just some another art form in itself. You know, doing yeah. the makeup so that must require a lot of dedication for sure. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And like you're talking about costumes and different characters, so which is the most favorite character for you to perform on stage? 
what is uh, what i most think is to i love all the characters that have played till now actually because i think uh, that the thing which i believe is have you present yourself in front of the audience carrying the character which is assigned to you so how you bring your character into life in your style is something that i believe and uh, i love every single character that i've played till now actually because mm-hmm. it's a different story different way of doing it and a different style the character you know his attitude and our attitude to mix up and bring it into life to become make something it more unique make yeah. it individual to you yeah, yeah. because every artist out there they have their own unique uh, style that they put try to put into the character to bring out the unique style within the character So that's what mm-hmm. I think. I think of all of the characters actually. I've played quite a few, so yeah, I like all of them. Yes, and just for our, some of our audiences who don't know, the characters that she plays are usually characters from religious books, right? So from yes. Hindu religious scriptures, from our mythology, and it's basically a reflection of that mythology on stage. And they say yes. it in form of poetry, in form of music, and in form of dance as well. so you know just in case so that's why she said that she's played krishna as well yes. so krishna is one of the most i think the most international god at the moment yeah, <laughs> yeah. and mom so she's also played krishna on stage that's really nice and uh, you have also actually performed with quite a few legends of the field right does that yeah. make you a bit nervous doing that because of you know given your experience or your age i mean your experience because of your age of course it's i wouldn't call it nervous but then it's just that I feel honored to perform with them. So it's, awesome. it's a great thing because you know being a newbie into the field, but then them trusting you with the entire show because you being a part of that show means that you too have a big role in it. Even though it's a small part, oh, you man. have a role in that. So them trusting you with all of that and me being a kid and performing with all of them was a really big, you know, opportunity, and uh, I felt honored to be there. So just one story from there is uh, I had to play the role of Satyavati uh, okay. in the Prasanna Pati Satyavati. So it's a story about a uh, a girl who has a stepmother. It's it, it's something that we see in the real world as well. You know how the right. stepmothers treat their kids. You know not all stepmothers treat their kids that way, but then there are few who don't really treat their kids fairly. Yes. You know stepmothers. Mm-hmm. So it was a story of that you know a girl who has to work really hard. even though her hand is like boiled and you know she has boils her skin has peeled off her mom mm. makes her work again and again and i had this opportunity to play that girl in oh, the wow. mela mela is where you know the the people uh, it's like uh, a group of people so in this mela you call mm-hmm. it uh, supposedly a team is called as a mela it's like a gathering so that, of people or a, you mean a team of people team of people so team, team of people are called as mela yeah okay. so this mela is going to perform today katil mela the famous one i can give example is of katil so katil okay. mela yeah that way so mela is called that way so with them and uh, it was a quite a great experience for me i would say so i think i got immersed in the role because you understand what uh, you know the kids go through in the real life because you yeah. don't really understand can go through but then i think that was an amazing experience for me yeah yeah i mean yeah this is something that you are not going through personally but then going into that character just gives you so much more empathy then for people yeah. who must not have the privilege that you and i have you know with our yeah. parents right so that's amazing and to face yeah. that or to perform that at a very young age i i don't know how you gathered that emotion within you that's amazing Thanks. so um I, i i believe there are not many girls who then eventually you know actually perform yakshagana because as the legacy goes it was passed on the the art form was actually passed on to the men to the boys but um, how do you feel being a girl and performing this and being very good at it uh, yeah. how does it feel do you think you know there are more girls getting into it or you want more girls to get into it or even you know not girls uh, your generation yeah. people your age do you think they're getting interested or girls in general uh you know yakshagana is called as the gandu kali right it's called as gandu kali because you know usually men used to do it and right. after few years you know i i'm if i'm not wrong 1870s or nearly there that's when women got into doing uh, yakshagana 
so back hmm. then it's women got into doing yakshagana but then they so were long not back. this is not recent no 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 okay. long back yeah so but then women there were not a lot of women who used to do it because you know you need a lot of strength to you do yakshagana you sh- you need to be versatile you know versatile in the sense you need to speak alongside dancing you finish dancing you mm. have to speak remember the talas you should listen to the beats and then you know understand oh this is the beat i have to go for that and then mm-hmm. for you know expressions you have to listen to the bhagavata bhagavata is the person who sings along with his uh, you know a beating gesture so he okay. has this uh, round it i don't know what what exactly it's made of bronze or some other metallic yes yeah He uses it so that he to get the beats and you know it helps the other uh, musicians who are playing. You know, madale is like a cylindrical kind of thing which is made up of wood. And then at side, I don't really know what material. Oh, I don't know what material, but then it's uh, it uh, it gives out a very amazing sound which goes right. along with tende and then tala. Tala is like uh, I don't know. Yeah. Tala is rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. Tala again, it's like a round metallic where you, you know, uh-huh. uh, yeah, push both the sides of the sides and then the sound comes out. Yeah. Okay. So there. So many women now are getting into the field and they know how important it is and they know how to carry themselves forward because you know these days women are not behind in anything and they are ready to explore at each and everything they want. So I think even kids of my own age or kids build, you know. younger to me are very interested in yakshagana and that is amazing to see here it's just not in here even in abroad you know there are so many mm. kids in tele teachers who are ready to teach them in the correct way and that's amazing to see yeah yes i i mean that that's amazing that the legacy is being taken forward and because the fear is that maybe the younger generation may not be interested because it's such a ancient art form but the fact that they are because and i don't see any reason why they shouldn't be with the storytelling in it there is performance in it no, i i'm sure the performance though goes on for hours yes? yes it does yes yeah the amount of energy that is going to take and if the performance is for hours i just can't imagine how much how many hours of practice you require if the performance is for that long i can't imagine the num- amount of practice you require and that i'm sure it requires a lot of dedication that was my yeah. actually the next question what's the most difficult part of being a yakshagana artist or performer i think difficult part is one thing is that when you're talking like when you have to deliver the dialogue you have to do it in kannada right and we usually speak in tulu or english at home and you know outside and you know but so everything comes in and that's i think one thing that every artist keeps in their mind it's like Okay, all the time. Entire sentence is covered up with a like in between. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. And yeah, yeah there's nothing else being a being diff uh, something that's called difficult in Yakshagana. I guess mm-hmm. it's just. I think one thing is just to present yourself like yourself. You know, not copying somebody else to put an impression on yourself. And mm-hmm. something that. So people they dance to impress. You know, few people have different opinions. They say dance to impress. Some people say dance to express. What I say is, if you express yourself, you end up impressing them. So that's ah, what I. Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna yeah, post you on that. <laughs> But I'm gonna <laughs> post this video. Yes, it's, it's dancing to express and dance yeah. is a form of expression. For yeah. Sure. So if you express, you end up impressing, and that's what I follow. And I think. uh to carry my own legacy because people usually ask me who you want to be like and i just end up saying that i want to be like me so there's there's somebody else saying like man i wish i could be her i i wish yeah. i could be her. and then they want to be a dvika <laughs> that's not a bad thing <laughs> yeah that's what i want to say and you know that's what i tell everybody else you know take somebody as your uh, you know inspiration but don't try to be them try to be yourself mm-hmm. try to bring out the unique things within you so yeah And in Yakshagan, I think it's all about enjoying and understanding yourself in the first place, your strength, your weakness, or how, what you can do or what you cannot do. And the other thing is how you carry on yourself within the character that's assigned to you. So that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's it. You have to sing. You have to dance. You have to say the dialogue. You have to wear so wooden jewelry. Apparently, gunny bags. Yeah. 
under your costume and that's it you know it's that simple and i think people like you who practiced it for so long are it's become a part of you so it's relatively easy for you but that's such a profound thing at your age that you're saying is that you don't have to you can be inspired by someone you can look up to someone but you don't necessarily have to be them and yeah. i think for me it's it's always been that i think at that when i was your age for me my idols and you know i had different idols then i would want to be like them that motivated me to get till where i am but um, i then i eventually realized it's better to be myself as opposed to somebody else and that's that's the greatest strength you can hold and i'm sure that's the even much more greatest greater strength you can hold as an artist for sure so i think i don't want to take much of your time you also have your exams going on <laughs> and um uh, but before going i want to ask you if you can teach me and our audience one movement or one step from the dance form that we can take with us please don't make me get up okay i'm wearing pajamas <laughs> Do it. So the other I can do with my face, or we can do with our hands. That you can probably teach us that we can take that with us. So in Yaksha Gana, it's about your creativity that you put on stage, as as I mentioned earlier. So with your face, your face is a very important element in Yaksha Gana. So okay. when you're making expression, you can either do with your eyebrows. You can go like this. Exactly. It's I can't just, do the other one though. I can't do the other one. No, it looks like I'm just being sad. This way I'm being angry. <laughs> yeah. So when you're like, uh, suppose if you are having a battle in Yaksha Gana, and then mm-hmm. the opponent is standing right there, you can do some step, and then you can stare at him this way, and yeah. Yeah. Put your like, hands on your waist and go. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> yeah. So there's different, and there's different talas, like different steps that I mean. So one yes. hand. So one now uh, very common hand gesture is this. So, yeah. Okay. Turn. Yeah. This. Nice. Yeah. I think I'm gonna be using this one though in my daily life. If somebody <laughs> upsets me, I'm gonna be like. Yeah, we have it. And this, right? This is a thumb. Yeah. What's this called? Oh, a thumb. You go outside. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank awesome. you so much, Azrika. Thank you so much for teaching us. Literally, I, it was a lesson for me today in my own culture. And I think I, I, I really feel sad that you know I can't speak Kannada, and I think that's one thing I really want to work on. And I can't imagine you being on stage speaking that level of Kannada, which I'm sure is difficult. I can't imagine because I can't speak basic. <laughs> <laughs> and this has inspired me kind of to go back to my roots also so thank you thank you for being taking your time out and being here and i hope to see you soon either when i'm in mangalore or when you come here me too wish you all the best adri wish you all the best talk to you thank soon thank you all the best with your journey that you're doing you're doing such an amazing job and Yeah, thank you so much for you know giving me an opportunity to be a part of your this amazing journey. So sweet. Thank you so much, Adi, and thank you everybody for joining. I'm going to be uploading this video very soon. Bye. Bye, Adi. Bye. See you. See you. Love you.